So hello and welcome. Olafur and I are back in a beautiful dancing dialogue and uh, it has been a couple of weeks but we are nevertheless very happy to be again in this beautiful space. Olafur, how do you feel today? Oh great. It's a lovely day. Lovely autumn day here in, uh, in Iceland. Nice to uh, catch up with you again. Very happy to be here and uh, share this dialogue with you. We have something interesting to talk about today, don't we? Yes, we have something very interesting. The more we get to know each other and talk, the more we find these commonalities. And it's so beautiful how you are into the seed and the spark and remembering. And so am I. And Olafur, of course, you have your beautiful template that is in a way encompassing how to bring out that seed again in organizations, in the world, but of course also within. I guess that's the primary spark, you know, and even like, you know, organizations and businesses and whatever it is that we are that drives us the notion or the inspiration whatever wherever it comes from it comes from us doesn't it it does you know even even like even the you know all the designs and the ideas around us is streamed up by somebody someone's spark someone's spark and someone's dream and and, and this is very much the essence and Maybe authenticity is much more than they are telling us. Maybe authenticity is a gold print within that is beyond the conditions and the way we have been living and even beyond duality. Absolutely. And you know, I really like the notion. There's a, there's a key notion here, Patrick, that is like, a, um, and I try to remember it, remind myself of it if I forget. But it's very, it's very key into living our authentic destiny or, 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 or taking care of the seed that is within us, our dream or whatever. And that is like, only I can live my life. No one else can live my life for me. So whenever I give that power away to someone else outside, whether it's through just like a simple approval or anything that gives away my power to live my authentic essence, then I risk disconnecting from myself. And that's usually the journey that we face, you know, when we step into human conditioning, we, we all have some kind of conditioning, is just to come back to ourselves and live in our own life from within and exactly. that's like and find the sea that is already there and you said that so beautiful and this is also the new and the emerging divine masculine yes it is within yes we have only we have this life at this moment to live together with all the other things that we are the soul the i am the the seed that is within and it is only us who can do that it is therefore our power and our choice and if we miss it we're missing our opportunity to dream this dream into being why we have chosen to be here so this is so deep and so beautiful and i really feel it's important that we remember who we are and it's okay that we lived for maybe eons in conditions and false beliefs and whatever but it doesn't matter because we are here now to remember. This is the time to remember that spark and that seed and live it without excuses, without guilt. Absolutely, absolutely. And it is a journey, a journey of everyday life. People think like it is like that people seem to be like oftentimes uh, forgetting how important and essential it is 
to do our best to live it in every single moment of our lives, not just through Sunday ceremonies or retreat in next month kind of thing, or maybe in, in, in those rare coaching sessions or whatever it is, yes. but really do our best to nurture it every day. And that's true for like, you know, especially for ourselves, because that's where it begins and that, that's where we're able to hold the connection in the first place. And that's very important for if you're a business leader and you are responsible to other people to, to make sure that we are connected and we respond able from that space, if you will, yes. Um, yes. to take care of it ourselves, you know, yes. and and that and to to do that we need space we need time we need to be able to incorporate what people seem to often look at as a luxury but it isn't really a luxury with like which is like to blend more wellness into our lives the, the, and, and look at the wellness is actually to generate this kind of connection this connection generates passion and productivity into whatever projects that we are involved in. So that's really kind of, you know, we need time and space. We need to create wellness. We need to be able to relax and listen to ourselves. And I think that is often overlooked in this journey, in this process. Yes. I really love how you bring that into responsibility. We are responsible for this body. We are responsible how we show up in the world. We are responsible for the situations that we co-create and create, fully or partially. And the wellness that I love to call vitality, I feel is so crucial in that. Yes, it takes time to nurture that body, to be physically well, to move in whatever way we choose to. This body is not made to sit on a desk 24 hours. It's also not made to sleep 24 hours, but it's more than the body. As you said, it's also nurturing the within, the heart, the soul. And as you said, it's not the hour on a Sunday in some kind of ritual. It's not the retreat. It's not in the meditation or the prayer or whatever we do. It is living it. And I feel this is what you and I are experiencing. We are more and more learning to be it, to be in that presence and to be that example and leader that we have come to be. Yeah, and it's a, exactly, and, that's, and, and it is an everyday journey. And it is also about those moments of pray, you know, waking up in the morning and have maybe a little bit of a ritual for yourself to in order to connect and it's a constant journey of conscious activities and it's like to maintain consciousness and and it's like and it is easy when we are connected and we feel the spark is alive uh, things seems to be working easier in many ways it's just because we are aligned with ourselves and the journey is always going to maintain that connection and then, then you're like, maybe tomorrow we wake up and we don't feel as aligned and for some reason, but that's okay. Then the journey is about being present and allow whatever is in the process to take place. Not, not to think one is good and the other one is bad. It's just to honor every part of the process and to always be aiming for that alignment and practice it in what, whatever way is relevant and suitable for us because we're also all different, right? But we all have certain key elements in common. It's like, uh, there's a, there's a, I'm, I'm part of a uh, course called Regenerative Leadership and it's, it's a great course. And there's, there's one of um, sort of thought leaders in that sort of uh, um, framework which is, uh, seems to be on an emerging world view nowadays. It's called John uh, Fuller, Fullerton. Uh, and, uh, and he said that like, for example, we have more in common than we have 
difference. Different. We have differences, and the differences make up, you know, what is sort of um, it gives us individual features and textures that are of great value, and it creates a sense of diverse diversification and diversity that is very, you know, important to us. But it's more like a snowflake kind of differences. It is all unique and different, but fundamentally it's all the same. And so that means like what is it kind of implying is that when we understand that even though we are all different, you know, we talk about genders and, 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 yeah. and skin colors, nationality, all these kind of things, we are more fundamentally the same. So the, the difference is more of a style the fundamentals are more is what kind of connects us all together in the way we live and and we all have the same life in a certain way and so that that's really kind of something to to think about in terms of like when we talk about our unique authentic seed it's more about a style in, in which we live it but understand we all have it in our own essence yeah, that kind of reminds me now of the divine feminine, because the divine feminine is all about harmony. It's all about connection, bringing things together, that, that beautiful relationship. And when we bring that divine masculine of that being within and unique and individual and do all these beautiful things, and we're coming together, we can see the commonalities and we can enjoy the differences because yes at the end of the day we're all here in a human experience and our soul has chosen this human experience and we're all together in the oneness of timelessness that presence we're all here at this time at this time of new beginnings and endings so as you said the commonalities are far bigger than our differences and the differences are the texture the flavors the taste the spices that bring that unique spark that we hold into the wholeness absolutely 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 and that and so it is that's the that's the journey of like also like as you have talked about uh, from the perspective of yes, the ascension archetypes, you know, yes. ascension archetypes, yes. um, that uh, it is no longer uh, a polarization approach. It's more like a process approach, the way I understand it. Yes. Uh, yes. And a, uh, in, in the, a way of living. And if, 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 there's a, if there's a perpetual movement of living forward, we're constantly dealing with different texture every day and uh, in, in, in all environment. Change is constant and we need the relativity of change to fully experience everything that is available to us. Yes. Uh, so the moment we start to be fixed on one thing or the other, the, being better or worse, and, things like that, what tend to happen is that we get stuck in certain ways, yes. even if it's even if you get mentally stuck, which is a loss of opportunity sometimes for us, for ourselves, in order to fully experience and appreciate the diversity that is available to us. And you and see it in a way that it actually oftentimes things that we uh, dread and dislike can be things that complement our own process. So if you, uh, when we start looking at looking at it that way and learning from it that way, which happens when we are relatively aligned with ourselves, and it becomes a pleasant journey. Yes. Even the part of it that might be uncomfortable, like shedding an old skin or an old mm -hmm. idea or belief or whatever it is, that can also be something that we can learn to see as a natural part of the process decomposing of all things and allowing them to nurture and fuel the new that is emerging yes the new the seed like we talked about in the beginning yes. 
And this is just so beautiful how you said that, you know, to be in that flow of real life, which is not the birth and the death and the end. No, it's the regeneration, the new birth. It's the end that brings something new. Also in my shamanic tradition, we're shedding the skin and the skin becomes again part of earth. So all these old ideas and paradigms that we have been caring for so long and that kept us in a comfort, it doesn't have to be difficult to shed it. And this is the idea of the emerging ascension archetypes. Mm -hmm. So ascension simply means that we are stepping into the new, into a new consciousness. And emerging, as you said, because we don't need to label it if it's good or bad. We don't need to get stuck and think about the positive and negative expression and right and wrong. It is about living it from the heart, from that seed and seeing beyond what we have considered maybe in the past as the final and the end of all. And so Beautiful. these new archetypes, their goal print is to be in that flow that you're talking about and remember that seed and how that seed in us that we are living day by day, moment by moment, breath by breath, is simply a part of this amazing wholeness that we are yet learning to understand and enjoy. Yes, exactly. And, that, uh, and it's almost like um, the, the whole, you know, the mystery of the wholeness, it is beyond our comprehension. That's why we talk about like a higher power or higher consciousness and allowing us, and for me, it has been very helpful to, to realize that like my, my version of reality is only a fraction of the entirety of reality. And the, and, and the humility is practiced in that simple notion that I'm just a part of that whole, but at the same time, I derive my value from being a part of the whole. I might not be a great person at all, but I'm a part of something that is greater than me. And that brings greatness to, into my life. That's what I believe, you know. That is what nurtures that unique individual seed of ours, is that yeah. relationship. Yeah, I, I just I, that. I think that brings the masculine and the feminine together in a way, you know receptivity and, and expression of that <laughs> and it's the end of separation you know this this is what we're talking about here and it is emerging it is here and it is just an honor that you and i can be part of this as you said it doesn't matter who we are in this world what whatever we have or we don't have i am not attached but we are here to bring things together, to be part of this wholeness that is emerging and evolving. To yeah, and I, want, and, and I want to share something that is like personally authentic to me. Yes, please. You know, on this journey, that is, and that is like I've been sort of just allowing things to unfold in my in my life. What based on what we talked about it last in our last dialogue, talking a little bit more about just following the excitement, you know, the was like supporting the life force within and seeing where it wants to go. And it's like, uh, and it's, a, and I admit it's not always easy. You know, I, I, I have conditioning to deal with, you know, and just from my society and the, the environment that I interact with every day. And that's okay. But like, what I'm realizing and sensing now is that like, it is not about like, um, the, it is about what we talked about in the beginning of this interview. It is about, that it is my responsibility to live life the way I prefer to live it based on the values that I love and the values that make me come alive. And that is not about someone else's approval if they like what I'm saying or what I'm doing. However, if I live life in this way, I have noticed that we tend to attract people that do resonate with where we are coming from. And we tend to be supported along the way. 
And that has been a beautiful kind of experience for me lately because life has been going into a different direction than I anticipated from the perspective of my programming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this. You know, Olaf, for really, this is this is what we're living, the anticip anticipations and the, even the ideas and the goals and whatever we want to call it that we had, they kind of crashed and, and awakening is part of that. Remembering who we truly are, being that spark, allowing the self and life to unfold takes us there that you say, oh, and now everything is different from what I could imagine and I feel again this is where we we realize it's okay we can mm -hmm. have that courage to come out mm -hmm. and show who we truly are speak that truth from the heart everything that comes from the heart is from the heart and the heart is not the emotional blah 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 the heart is the center of who we are so when it comes from the heart naturally we are attracting others who resonate with that with that beauty with that truth with that uniqueness that we bring to the wholeness and yeah i don't pretend life is easy either you know we all go through our things this is the human experience but as we remember every moment that we are connected we are in that divine feminine masculine that is now really emerging in the world it's okay yeah and they're becoming and we are starting to realize it and it is very sensual um I, I really like to bring this point across here that the masculine and feminine are not separate from each other no, it is not an othering that need to need to take place here you know those kind of polarities that we perceived as opposites in a certain way they are a central part of each other and and to in order for us to come in touch with ourselves on the deepest level in this in this way connect to the wholeness that is already alive within us and the wholeness that brings out the seed of who we truly are we need to be able to respect accept and love both the masculine and the feminine exactly even though we even though we have a preferred way of personal expression either masculine or feminine the relationship between them needs to be under the umbrella of wholeness and equality exactly and that we are gender man women or whatever now is available has nothing to do with the divine masculine and feminine it has nothing to do with that because this is again part of that seed that we're holding within and that is part of the gold print of the emerging archetypes and of course it's beautiful for me to dialogue with you as we are both Laika the, the Kiero call it Laika the the ones that dream a new world into being if you're not connected to that seed if you don't have the courage to live it, you cannot dream a new world into being. And you cannot experience that wholeness. So I really feel we are dancing in this Laika energy of dreaming a new world into being. But as we also spoke about seeds, and I feel this is important, one of these archetypes I actually was given as seed of love. And I feel our conversation, our dialogue today is a lot about the seed of love too, because that seed inside is in the heart. And if we really look at it, it is love. That passion is for the love of self-expression, self-creation, as well as the creation of the wholeness. So I really love how we flow today with this dreaming, this new world into being and being seeds of love. 
and the, uh, it always comes back to love, doesn't it? You know, and uh, it's, that seems to be the <clears throat> that that seems to be the one of the most fundamental aspects of it all is that 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 that, and that seems to be what is available to us all whenever we find this connection and if we nurture it and allow this kind of i mean i mean it's almost like it but it sounds like some people i guess it sounds like a cliche or whatever but we are always you know heading in the and then that we all crave this the sense of true love and the true love is within the relationship with our own true self and that is the, that is something that like i mean it sounds so simple when you talk about it and that is sometimes the whole you know what what i think the whole journey is about yes. and it is not about the accomplishments that we make along the way even though they're all valuable all the all the you know the the, 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 the magical reality that we can potentially birth into or manifest in this world through our projects and our companies and enterprises and, and communities and all those things that are potential. Yet, the, the whole manifestation, most probably, you know, the key to it all and the journey of it all is most probably just to come back to the notion that we are, in our essence, love. <laughs> exactly. And this is maybe one of the biggest revelations. And love is that heals everything. Love is that brings peace. Love allows collaboration. Love takes away all that has separated us. And again, going to these emerging archetypes in general, if we don't come from a place of love, you cannot create what we are about to create or what we are already creating. You cannot embody. And it starts with self-love. The more I can love that wholeness of me, the more I can love my partner, my family, the world, the communities, the businesses, the projects that we mm -hmm. are involved with. Mm -hmm. When we step out of that competition and fear and, and how things should be, a template is a guidance, is a, a blueprint, a gold print to how we can create. It's not, it's not a limitation of an analysis. This is how you need to do it and then you have a point and then you still don't know what to do with the point. A template, a gold print is opening up. I mean, life itself has its own template. Exactly. It has its own you know, sequences and spirals and, you know, and we are still a part of that, you know, still a part of the whole, you know, life unfolding through certain themes and templates. And, and, but the fundamental, the, the, the internal reality, perhaps the field of it all is like, it happens within the spirit of the wholeness, the love, or, you know, whatever it is that like, that glues it all together. Uh, we can create things that are more in alignment with it or create things that are less in alignment with it. But if you can find a template, you know, like I believe my template, for example, is relatively, or it's not my template, it's just what I think is relatively um, a, a healthy approach in how to be aligned with our own seed or the seed of you know the the company and it's like and it's like if and the beauty of it all if you when you find and you listen to people that with that have with their business ideas you, know, you talk about like the, the you know people in the startup world and what what it was that actually sparked that idea that they have yes you know their inspiration or whatever the, what it was and the, what moved them to take the action that they wanted to what you will often find there in the seed is love or something. Of course. You know, and then and then what happens? Then often we get lost along the way. We forget what the origin was, or what was the original idea, or the original dream, or original spark. We get stuck in the in the 
and all the clutter of the external world and other people's opinion. And this is true for us personally as well. Yes, of course. And, and, and sometimes we forget. We forget yes. the seed is there. Uh -huh. And then the whole journey comes into like processing us back out from the space. And there it is. Just like it was in the, uh, <laughs> the beginning. Yeah, I, I love how you also bring that into context and it applies for companies. It applies even for countries. You yeah, know, there, there's absolutely. at the essence of all is love. And we have covered off that love with fear, with separation, with doubt, with conditions. And now we have an opportunity to shine this love again. And I love how you do that in companies. And as you know, I have my background in organizational development. So when you speak, it kind of takes me back, but yet it makes me present to being with organizations at this time and also being part of allowing them to come back to that love that was the seed where they all started whether it's a community or an organization, whether it is whatever, or if it's ourselves. And as we said, and as we were so clear today, what is within can be without. What is not within cannot be without. We cannot talk about things that we don't live, that we don't embody. And I'm really happy where our dialogue took us today, Olafur. I don't know about you. It was very alive. There's a lot that came through in this dialogue. and uh, You couldn't lot. pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And, uh, and, uh, and, it, and it is, I believe, I, you know, I believe, you know, it, the principles of resonance sometimes take, you know, take a life of its own, you know, and we, and, and I'm very happy to, uh, that we allow that to happen in our dialogue. This is what good dialogue is to me. Yes. Allow our resonance to move through us and, 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 and to feel it in a certain way. And then that is very healthy. You know? and, uh, yes. and, and you find that like, oh, there it is. There is the spark, you know. There is the spark. And yeah. we spark yeah. each other, you know. Exactly. And it is just so magical, so wondrous how this just arises spontaneously. I'm always in awe to see when true dialogue happens. It's yeah, in resonance, of course. Yeah. Just beautiful. I feel we're going to close it for today for ourselves yeah. and for our audience because we love when they hear till the end. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for staying with us. Yes, thank you for staying with us. <laughs> and we are looking forward actually for the next one, Olafur, because there's so many things that you and I love to dialogue about and share with the people out there who are in that same process, on that same journey. And we love to be part of all of us on this journey and this beautiful dancing dialogue that Olafur and I can just experience and allow to unfold. So Olafur, again, thank you so much to Reykjavik and Iceland. Thank you. I really Peru. love what we do. Thank you so much. And we catch you soon. The final word is yours. Much appreciation, Patrick. And it was very enjoyable. Look, look forward to next session. Yes, we will. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much.